Greetings everyone. Today we are going to start with the nomenclature of ketones, our next topic. Let's begin with a simple example over here. I have drawn a simple ketone and as we all are aware, the ketones have this kind of functional group that is C double bond O. First, I'll tell you what is the IUPAC name. For IUPAC name of this compound, you have to see how many carbon atoms are there. Okay. So since we can see here, there are three carbon atoms. So we'll call it as propane because it's a derivative of propane. So I'll just knock out the E and write propane own. You have to just write the suffix own. One more example, CH3, CH2, CH2, C double bond O, CH3, suppose. Okay. So here, how many carbon atoms are there? You can see one, two, three, four, five. Start numbering from here because this carbonyl group should get the least possible number. So it becomes five carbon atoms. So it is pentane, pentane. Okay. Remember to remove this E and two own so over here we have taken two simple examples now if you look at this first one it has got same number of carbon atoms on both the sides so such a ketone which has similar groups on both the sides of carbonyl carbonyl group are called as symmetrical ketone they're called symmetrical ketones so this one is symmetrical ketones because it has got similar groups on either side of the functional group whereas this one has got one carbon atom on the right side and three carbon atoms on the left side so this is an unsymmetrical ketone and whenever you see ketones they can show metamerism we all know what is metamerism different number of alkyl groups on either side for example if i ask you to write the metamer of this ketone it would look like this ch3 ch2 C double bond O, CH2, CH3. Look at that. So we have five carbon atoms. Here also we have five carbon atoms. These are the two metamers of the ketone. In the first one, we have three alkyls on the left, one on the right. But in the second one, we have two on the left, two on the right. You can have various combinations possible. Now in this present case, only this is the possible combination. Okay. So this was the IUPAC name. Now, if you want to name it in the common common name of a ketone is very simple. It has to be named by looking at the two alkyl groups which are on either side. Name them alphabetically. This one is methyl. This one is methyl. So you have got two methyls. So you will say dimethyl ketone. Instead of saying methyl methyl ketone, you are just going to name it as dimethyl ketone. Same way when you look at this one, you have got this group as methyl this group as propyl okay look at this propyl propyl can be of two types n propyl isopropyl this is n propyl because it's normal propyl it's not branched so we'll say n propyl and when you look at the alphabetical sequence you have to not look at the n you have to just look at the p so alphabetically alphabetically m will be coming first so the common name of this compound is going to be Some more compounds I'll show you now. CH3, CH2, CH2, C double bond O, CH double bond CH2. Okay. So when we look at such compounds, here we can see that there is a double bond as well as there is a ketone. And we have to give more importance to a ketone. Okay. So now here the numbering definitely will start from this side because C double bond O should get the least possible number. So it is it is containing hex okay hex is the root word here so we'll call this as hex hex at position number one you have got a double bond so we'll say hex one in look at this look at this you have to remove the e dash three own hex one in three own will be its iupac name some more examples ch3 ch2 c double bond o ch2 c double bond o and uh, let's write one more ch3 so in this compound you can see there are two two ketonic functional groups so we'll start numbering from if we start numbering from the left side one two three four five six so what is the positions we are giving three and five so three and five is a very big number and if we start doing it opposite, we start numbering like this 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six. Then what positions do I get? I get four and two. So if I start from left side, I get three and five. If I start from right side numbering, I get four and two. So which is the lowest sum of locand? The lowest sum of locands is six. So which is the right combination of writing the numbering? It's always going to be from the right side. So this is the way I'm going to number it from right to left. So its name is going to be, instead of hex, I'll say hexane two comma four dion. Now see here, I'm going to write this hexane. I'm not going to remove this E because there, there is more than one ketonic functional group. So if you have more than one functional group of the same type, then we have to retain this last letter E also. So that is your IPAC name. Now these are the two very important uh, aromatic ketones for your board exam. Very important for exam. Okay, please remember the names. Common name, IUPAC name. If you talk about common name, as I told you, we are going to we are going to say what is this? What is this? Methyl. What is this? Phenyl. What is this? Phenyl. What is this? Phenyl. So first of all, in your mind, must be clear what is each group known as and then start now naming it. Common name will be dimethyl ketone. Here, diphenyl ketone. So common, is not, common name is not a big challenge, okay? Now look at the IPAC name. IPAC name is very important. So in IPAC name, we are just going to call this group. We are going to just call this group as aceto aceto and this is an aromatic ketone so we'll say acetophenone what is phenone aromatic ketone in which the c double bond o is connected to the benzene ring same way if we look at this second molecule look at this look at this what's this benzo this this thing so it's benzo phenone benzo phenone so this is, these are often there in the board paper, benzophenone, acetophenone, they are extremely important for you. Let's look at these ones now. Here we can see we have benzene, CH2 on one side and CH2, CH3 on the other side. So what is this group? This is ethyl. What is this group? Benzene attached to CH2 is called as benzyl. So I'll call this as benzyl. And while writing its common name, I'll write it as alphabetically B will come first and then E. So I'll say common name is going to be and it's IUPAC name. Let's look at the IUPAC name. So from where should we start numbering from the left side or the right side? If you see, we'll start from the left side because we should get C double bond as the least possible number. So we'll start one, two, three four so it becomes look at this it becomes butane butanone at position number one it has got phenyl so i'll say one dash phenyl one phenyl butane dash two dash own look at this before the digit and after the digit you have to put a dash okay look at this so if you look at this one it has got on the left side isopropyl group and on the right side methyl group on the right side methyl group on the left side isopropyl we are not going to look at the i we are going to look at the p alphabetically we don't have to look at the i we have to look at the p so when we start naming the common name we'll call it as methyl isopropyl ketone and when you look at the IPAC name, select the longest chain, select the longest chain. So it starts from here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like this. So it's going to be three, three, methyl, three, methyl. What is this? One, two, three, four, three, methyl, butane, dash, two, dash, own. At the second position, you are attaching double bond O. This one. Now here we have the common name. Look at this common name. Now this is alpha carbon, this is alpha carbon. 
the alpha carbon is the carbon which bears the functional group which is attached to the functional group so here this is the functional group look at this this is the functional group so this is alpha carbon this is alpha carbon this is beta carbon this is beta carbon this is gamma carbon this is, and there, that's all so this is beta beta so we'll say beta methyl cyclohexanone because it's a cyclohexane it's a cyclohexane attached to double bond o so it is cyclohexanone and in the IUPAC name we'll number this as 1 2 3 look at that 1 2 3 so it becomes 3 methyl cyclohexanone all right so this is the way you're going to do an exam solve all the questions from the ncrd that will be more than enough for your exams as much as you practice will become better so we'll stop here this is the uh, this is the end of today's video and we'll be continuing in the next video with the preparation of aldehydes and ketones so next time see you again take care god bless you thank you so much